These guys are probably the closest people that I've ever been associated with. I love these guys, and I'm sure we're going to be doing 55 and 60. You have people who you can count on, and you know will be willing to help you out with no strings attached. Mm. So, you know, I feel very, very fortunate to have this crew of, of mine around me. It's true, you just get closer as time goes by. Well, this is the closest group I have ever met in 50 years. We still love to see each other. Sometimes we don't recognize each other because some people have gotten older. I'm actually closer to these guys than I am to my own brother. You have a level of trust and understanding with these guys because you share a background with them. From about a week or two into that youngster year, we were family. If somebody just came out of the blue and said, who are your best friends or something, I had to start ticking off people in the 23rd company. We were together for four years through punishment, pain, uh, sorrow, joys. That was in 1965, uh, during Plebe summer. The experiences you went through Plebe year, you know, um, you know, there was, there was some not so nice upperclassmen, you might want to put it, and uh, it's just something you see in a lot of uh, a lot of different organizations when people go through a crucible together. You know, the, the job of the, the plea detail was to try to run us out, I think. <laughs> but, you know, we overcame that, mm -hmm. and we, uh, we made it through plea summer, we made it through plea year. We were getting to know each other, we were getting to try to figure out what it was that we were going to be when we grew up. Some of us are still working on that. They weren't gentle with us. <laughs> From day one, it's not, are you a wonderful person? Are you a smart person? It's whether or not you're good enough to graduate. The company had some adversity through the years, but they stuck together. And we saw good leadership, and we saw bad leadership, and we still stuck together. Up until the day, almost all of us graduated. No, well, for the most part, we all misbehaved. Going over the wall at night and getting subs at Chris's sub shot is not part of the formal curriculum, but it helps you to develop leadership characteristics. Right before I left to go to flight school, they called me in and they wanted to know, somebody's been making calls to Captain Sims. Who's doing that? I said, well, it's not me. <laughs> but I knew who it was. Captain Sims was so mad at us for doing these petty little things. I remember he went to my roommate at the time and he said, all right, you guys, I guess you guys won this one because I, I can't figure out who did all this to me. But if I ever see Alfieri or Donovan or Mathis one more time, I'm going to beat them to within an inch of their lives. And I thought, wow, <laughs> he's really serious. But you had to watch out because you weren't supposed to be playing cards for money. And Dave was an excellent bridge player. We played a lot of it. A lot of it. I was not quite good enough. Yeah. But at least Dave didn't throw cards, so. <laughs> or kick me. A couple of times, I, I'm, I'm absolutely certain he reached for my neck to choke me to death uh, with the way I was bidding. There was more than one person <laughs> who would pull into the yard just before midnight, and all you could smell is burning rubber and engine crackling with heat because of the high-speed runs to get home. Some of the things we used to do, some people got in trouble, others didn't. <laughs> they made you work together, and then the whole um, uh, fiasco of uh, our first class year, uh, that, you know, we brought us even closer together. So it was, the, I forget, October of, of our senior year, uh, one of our guys was dating a, a Navy junior out in town. John Carrier uh, was doing that, and her father was a Navy captain inside the seven mile limit. And so we went out and we had a birthday party for John Carrier. You know, the captain was there, the daughter was there, the mom was there, and we brought with us a keg of beer. But it was within the seven mile limit, which means you're not supposed to drink inside the seven mile limit. But we did. But compared to some of the parties we'd had, it was very mild and basically, uh, found that, uh, I forget the number, 23 or 4 of us had committed a serious offense, and we got 120 demerits and 12 weekends restrictions. And we were never placed on report, adjudicated, witnessed, any of that. We just all trooped down to the Commandant's office, and he gave us 120. The process was almost upside down, the way 
the, the Navy pursued us. Mm -hmm. One of the questions raised was, why are we being punished so badly as opposed to the normal uh, amount of demerits and restriction that would be associated with c consumption of alcohol? And the Commandant uh, said, well, it's because your leaders were there. You, your company commander was at the, at the party. You mean if it had just, just been a bunch of one-stripers out there, we'd have just gotten 75 demerits? And then to my utter amazement, the captain said, yes. What? <laughs> what? This makes no sense to me. 120 demerits when you're a senior. I think we just, I think we just won the game. Deep down the middle, it's intercepted. Picked up by Tyler Pistorio. 120 demerits as a senior, 150 gets you thrown out. 120 means you get a D in conduct. We were in difficulty for most of the year, and we hung together. Every weekend, together, always together. Probably common misery come in anger against how it happened. But we knuckled down to things and uh, tried to walk the straight and narrow. We tried to protect our plebes from the uh, 11th Company Tigers that had been transported into our company as our second class. There's always somebody somewhere that thinks they're the only ones that ever endured a plebe year. Uh, we were smart enough to know that was not true, but uh, unfortunately, several of these guys never learned that. Your senior year, when you're supposed to be giving guidance to the plebes, but we're kind of afraid to say anything, because if we do something wrong, we're gone. Right. We, you don't have any cushion with, oh, I messed up last time. You know. right. no, we didn't do anything to the plebes. I had my wisdom teeth pulled the day before. That was uh, how I escaped that. It was called into the company officer's office, and demanded to know if I was at the party. No, sir. <laughs> See? <laughs> what happened to us our senior year did two things. We got into a lot of trouble. 17 of the 28 of us got into a lot of trouble. And we ended up having to do a lot of restriction. And those who didn't get in trouble had to assume leadership positions and support those of us who did get in trouble. So it was hard on everybody. That brought to life the experience that we'd had the previous three and a half years. It led me to understand how you can be part of something and, and still rise to the top of it and support your, your, your teammates. Mm -hmm. And so we, we all tried to do that, and it's worked well with this group, I think. Yeah. And so this idea of pulling together as a team, as comrades, as shipmates, mm -hmm. brothers in arms, whatever you want to call it, it's very powerful. It, it's the hardest thing I ever did in my life. But I did it with a group of people who are here today. I could not have survived that senior year without the help and the support of my classmates and those little ones that are here tonight. You just don't go through four years of the, of the Naval Academy and not get close to people. And it's made a big difference in my life because they're, they're great friends and they're great people. So uh, I feel very fortunate to have this experience. So it's been good. Joining the Navy was one of the best decisions I ever made. I wouldn't pass it up for anything. They're impressive people. Damned impressive people. It's, it's just family. Simple as that. We're the only company in the class of 1969 where all 23 living members showed up. And sometimes all you have to do is show up. And we have managed to put together what I think is a fabulous story about the 23rd Company and what we mean to each other. What I thought was important back then, I found out really wasn't. And these guys, again, are the ones that made me realize that. That it didn't matter whether I had succeeded or something or failed at something, I was still part of this group. And that was okay. The more we can focus on relationships and on connecting and on valuing each other and uh, encouraging and supporting one another, that's, that's the real important stuff in life.
I mean, is this something that I would do over again? I looked at those kids today and I said, you know, it might be, it might be nice to be back here. Maybe it's nostalgia, but because I couldn't wait to get out when, when I was there. <laughs> well, we can do this at least one more time. Yeah. I can't say enough good things about them. I wouldn't change a day.